Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find closest node to two given nodes. We're given a directed graph of n nodes numbered from zero to n minus one. In this case though, each node has at most one outgoing edge, though that's not really relevant to this problem, I don't think. It sort of is, but even if it wasn't true, the problem wouldn't really change too much. The graph itself is represented with a list of edges. Now, it's not a two-dimensional list of edges, so the index is going to be the source node, and the value at that index is going to be the destination node. If there's no outgoing edge from i, then the value is negative 1 to indicate that there is no actual node for the destination. We're also given two source nodes, sort of, node 1 and node 2. And probably the hardest part of this problem is understanding this paragraph here, because this entire problem isn't super difficult. It's mainly just graph fundamentals once you actually understand what they're trying to ask, which is we want to know all the nodes that we can reach starting from node one. In this case, node one is zero. So from starting from here, we want to know all the nodes that we can reach. Also, starting from node two, which in this case is one, we want to know all nodes that we can reach starting from here. In this case, both of these nodes can reach the two nodes two and three. Written another way, we know that starting from node zero, we can reach node two just by moving along one edge. So this is the distance to reach node two. We can also reach node three by moving along two edges. And it's the exact same for node one in this case as well. So I'll quickly write that. Now, ultimately, what we want to find is among all of the nodes that we can reach from both node zero and from both node one. So in this case, there's two possibilities. There's node two and there's node three. For each of those nodes, we want to find the maximum distance from node zero and node one. In this case, it's one in both cases. So to take the max of both of these is pretty easy. It's just one. And we want to do that for all of these. So for node three as well, what's the max distance? Well, it's two in both cases. So we just say two. Now, among all of these values, we want to find the closest node to both of these given nodes. So what we would do with these is minimize this array of values. Of course, the minimum in this case is one. And what we want to return is not one itself, because this is the distance. We want to return the actual node that is the closest to both of these. And that node is two. We added it to both of these so at a high level, that's pretty much the problem. So if you were confused what it was asking, that's what they mean. When they say it's such that the maximum between the distance from node one to that node and from node two to that node is minimized, that's what they mean. They mean taking the maximum of these two values and doing that for every single node and then minimizing the actual distances. And if no possible answer exists, we would return negative one. And when exactly would that occur? Well, if possibly node zero can only only reach node three and maybe node one can only reach node two, then neither of these two nodes can reach the same node. So we can't really do anything. We can't do the minimum and maximums that we were doing previously. So our result would just be a default value of negative one. So that's what we're trying to do. How exactly can we do it? Well, one, the way I'm writing this, it kind of implies that we would probably want to use a hash map for node zero and for node one. We want to map every node to the distance it is away from both node zero and node one. So we're gonna have two hash maps. And to actually find these distances, we'll just run a basic graph algorithm. We could do either DFS or BFS. And the reason they would be pretty much identical in this case is because each node has at most one outgoing edge. So BFS would pretty much run just like DFS in this case. So you can pick your poison. I'm going to go with BFS and we'll have to run it twice to build this hash map and this hash map. So you could say the overall time complexity. We know BFS takes big O of N to run over a graph. We'll have to do it twice. So we say two times N, but that reduces to big O of N. And to actually build these hash maps, it's going to take big O of N memory as well. So now let's code it up. So since we're going to run a graph traversal, the first thing we probably want to do is create a adjacency list. Since we're just given a list of edges, we'll have to build that ourselves. So 
I'm going to create a hash map, which in Python you can do like this, default dict. And we're going to be mapping every source node to the list of nodes that it can reach. So we're going to go through every node in our edges. So in Python, an easy way to do that is enumerating the list of edges. So we'll get the index and the value at that index, which I should probably call something else. I'll call it destination. So then we're going to say that for this source node i, we're going to append to its adjacency list the destination node. So it can reach that destination node. And then we know we're going to run BFS, but I'm not going to quite define the entire function just yet. We know that we want to create two hash maps for the distance mapping every node in the graph to the distance it is away from node one and we want to do the exact same thing for node two so i'm just gonna rename this and then we want to actually run our bfs we want to start from node one also passing in this node one distance map because we want it to get filled up after running our bfs and we're going to do the exact same thing whoops, for node two. And so now we can probably start filling in the BFS. We know we're gonna have some source node and we're gonna have some distance map, let's call it that. This is gonna be a pretty cookie cutter BFS algorithm. So we're gonna create our queue and Python, you can instantiate a deck. We need to obviously have some source node that we're gonna start with. Of course, that's our parameter source. And we wanna also give it a second value because we don't just want to run BFS, we wanna keep track of the distance for every single node that we have visited. The source node, we can say the distance it is away from itself is gonna be zero. I didn't quite mention this earlier, but an edge case is that can the return value of this be one of the source nodes, node one or node two themselves? And the the answer is yes in this problem. So it's important that we do add this here. It's also important so that we don't get stuck in an infinite loop when we run our BFS. Next, we're just going to continue iterating while our queue is non-empty. So we're gonna queue.pop left. And when we pop, we pop a node and we pop the distance that that node is away from the source. And then for that node, we wanna go through all of its neighbors. So for every neighbor in the adjacency list, of the node that we just popped. We then want to take this neighbor and append it to the queue and the distance that this new neighbor will be is the distance of the node that we just popped plus one, of course, because we're just you know traversing along another edge. So distance plus one. And while we're at it, we might as well fill in the distance of that node. So we can say for this neighbor, the distance is distance plus one. But remember, we don't wanna get stuck in an infinite loop. So we're only gonna do this for every single neighbor that has not already been visited yet. How do we know if a node has already been visited? If it's been added to the distance map, this distance map kind of serves two purposes to actually map the distance for every node and to make sure that every node has been visited. So if neighbor is not in distance map, then only then do we actually execute this, which reminds me when we append this source to the queue, we should probably also add its distance to the queue, which is just gonna be zero. Well, not to the queue, to the uh, distance hash map. Once we have that done, it's a pretty straightforward algorithm if you can you know, figure out what the problem is asking. We know that the result should initially have a default value of negative one because that's supposed to be the default value. And we also wanna keep track of what the result distance is because we only wanna update the result. Remember the result is the node itself, not the distance. We're not returning the minimum distance, we're returning the node that has the minimum distance. The result distance will initially set to infinity because we're trying to minimize it. So any value that's less than infinity is going to work. So then we can just go through every single possible input node. An easy way to do that is just take the length of the edges that we were given because we know every node is labeled from 0 to n minus 1. And we know the number of edges is going to be the same as the number of nodes. And then we want to check. We want to make sure that node is in node one distance map and it's in node two distance map it can be reached by both nodes then we want to calculate the max distance that it is from node one we can get the distance like this that's why we created these two hash maps and same thing for node two we can get the distance like this we take the maximum of those two and that's our distance now only if 
our distance is less than our current result distance, do we actually update the result? And we would then update the result to I because we want to return the node itself, not the distance, but we do have to update the result distance just like this. And then finally, we can go ahead and return our result. Before I run this to make sure it works, I want to quickly mention that here up above, the way we created our adjacency list, we know that some of the destination nodes could have been negative one, and we added those to the adjacency list, and we also traversed them over here. And so in some cases, we would have added a negative one as the key of our distance maps. But since the way we traversed the nodes here, we only made sure to traverse from zero to n minus one, we will basically ignore those. And it doesn't really change the overall time complexity either. Actually, I just noticed a typo here. This should be result distance, not result dest. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.